know that my Redeemer lives and that he stands at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, help me to know my end. The number of my days I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days, as it were, a span long. And my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man altogether living is vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is in thee. I'm a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the earth or the world was formed, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and say, Come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday seeing that it is past as a watch in the night. The days of our age are three score years and ten. And though some men be so strong that they come to four score years, yet is their strength then but labor and sorrow. And we are gone. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ 
the first fruits, then those that are Christ at his coming. But some men will say, with what body then shall they be raised? Thou fool. There are bodies that are celestial. There are bodies that are terrestrial. But God gives it a body. Every one of them as it pleases him. The audience may go to your seats. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, we're gathered here today at the behest of Almighty God who has reached his hand again into our human family and has gathered unto himself one of his own beloved sons. We're here today in celebration of memory and in love and reflection in some way of the life of our beloved brother Lester Chauvet Young. I want to welcome the Young family, welcome the men of Omega, welcome all of you, my brothers and sisters, wherever you may be from. The family has provided a program for our consideration, and we will follow the program that has been given to us. There are a couple of exceptions. Old Testament is written, will be read by Dr. Michael Wesley, Jr. The New Testament will be read by Reverend James Wesley. And a video will be played at the place where the obituary is. But those noted exceptions will follow the program that's been given to us. Music now, Ms. Bates.
tragedies are commonplace. All kind of diseases, people are slipping away. The economy's down, people don't have enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, folks without homes, living out on the streets. And the drug habits, some say they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. Oh, but you've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, 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 it could have been me Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God some glory. Hallelujah. Old Testament words of comfort come from the 23rd number of Psalms. We'll all say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. The New, New Testament scripture will be coming from the book of Thirst Thessalonians chapter 4 beginning at verse 13. The word of the Lord reads, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In the atmosphere of the Lord, I hear the angelic host compelling us to think about this prayer. I need thee every hour. Most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. Whether you are a believer or not, you can mumble this in your heart. And the God we serve can hear you in your brokenness, hear you in your imprisonment, hear you in your grief. That's a prayer, you know. I need thee. How many need him this morning? Come on now. We're in the midst of the atmosphere of God. I don't care whether you are a member of a church or not, whether you think God is real or not, if you need him, you can whisper from your own heart this morning, me too, Lord. As we think about the God who never sleeps nor slumber, I know that he is listening to our hearts right now. Won't you bow your heads in a moment of prayer? I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, Thou who have great mercy upon each one of us, Thou who knows our ups, You know our downs. You know when we can and you know when we can't. And right now, Lord, many souls are gathering in this atmosphere to acknowledge Lester Showboat Young. Some come with a tear in one eye, while others come with a twinkle in the other. 
Have mercy upon us, O oh God. According to your loving kindness, rescue us from our grief and our strickenness that we have encountered because of our love and our bond for your servant, Lester. We asking you, O oh God, to hasten to the tear in our eyes because we are grieving, we are bewildered, we are staggering to wonder what tomorrow will be without Shilbo. We are wrestling with the tear in our eyes, O oh Lord, because we wonder if somebody else could have taken his place instead of now. But because you are a God who's too wise to make a mistake and too loving to turn away in our moments, we ask you to attend to the tear in our eyes. Look upon Rosa and Erica. Look upon Demond and Bertrand and Natasha. Look upon his brothers and sisters, O oh God, who are standing with the best appearance they can under the heavy circumstances of feeling the sting of death again. And grant them comfort, solace, and peace. Then, Lord, there are others who have a twinkle in the other eye. The kind of twinkle that knows that no one could have moved like you did on that Wednesday. And deliver my brother, this father, from the burden of pain and suffering after being faithful to fulfill his purpose and mission. We are asking you now, O oh God, to bring the twinkle that lets us know with assurance that he has a well done coming as we will when we arrive at the same. Now hear our prayer, O oh God, hear our prayer, and incline thine ear to us, and grant us thy peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and we all say it. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Yes, you're the heart of my contentment you hold for everything that I do I do and Jesus you're the center of all of my joy mm -hmm. when I've lost my direction you are the compass for my way, you are the fire and the light. When my nights are long and cold, mm -hmm. in sadness, you are the laughter that shadows all of my fears. And when I'm all alone. Your hand is there, is there to hold. Yes, Jesus, you're the center of my, 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 all of my joy, everything that's good and perfect. Lord, it came from you. 
Jesus, you're the center of all of my joy. You, Lord, are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You are the music and in the meadows and the streams. Oh, the voices of the children. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The Bible tells us in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You might say, well, what are you talking about giving him thanks for at a time like this? Know as surely as you live, you are going to die. Death is a part of life, and once we accept that, if we are wise, we will prepare for this day because we all got it on God's calendar. But one thing I can say about this man, my brother, was that he was a great example. The way that we came up, so I'm 68 years old, and when we came up, we used to have to go to the back of the restaurant if we had money to go to the restaurant to pay for our food and 
and there were certain things that we weren't allowed to do, but this man, because of the way that Madea raised us up, and I'm not talking about Tyler Perry, I'm talking about the real Madea. She was about this tall and she didn't play. The way Madea raised us is that you took care of each other. So the oldest one that was left at the house had to take care of the younger ones that was in the house. My two older brothers, James and Bobby, was in the army. My sister, Elle, had gone to Detroit, and so Lester of Showboat was at home. He was the oldest, so he had to take care of the other three that was under him. So him and Mumu, my brother Vernon, him and Mumu, you know, everybody got a nickname. Showboat and Mumu got jobs, and on payday, they would go to the store and they would buy their clothes and they'd be the sharpest thing around. I wanted to be just like my brothers. And this was, this was the one that was the character out of the bunch. That's how he earned that moniker, Showboat. And so I said, I want to be sharp just like my brother. He, he would go to basketball games and football games laid on purpose so that when he made his grand entrance and just stand and strike a pose, folks get ooh and ah and take pictures. That was that man. I said, I want to be sharp like my brother Showboat. I thank God for the times that he loaned them to us. Thank God for the example that he showed me as a brother. He was one of the first ones to, I think he was the first black to work at the uh, state trooper's office in Midfield. Back there, you didn't even go to Midfield if you was a black person. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But he was one of the first, if not the first, black person to work at state trooper's office. And then he was another first to work at, it was known as Central Bank back then. Now it's Compass, then BBVB, XYZ, whatever it is. But this was the, y'all may know him as Showboat, but this was my brother. This is the one that I slept in the same room with at Madea House. This was the one that had to take care of us when Madea was gone and to make sure that everybody was intact when Madea came home because Madea did what play? So I thank God for this celebration. I thank God for my brother. I thank God for the closeness that Madea instilled in us and the things that her through God taught us how to live this life. She taught us about God. She taught us about taking care of each other. And she taught us how to be respectful. You saw on the duck, you know, how y'all doing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. May I please and thank you. Those things still matter. And this man right here showed us how to put it into action and to be successful. So on this day that we celebrate the life of my brother, Showboat, thank God for this time. Thank God for him instilling and sowing into my life. I've lived long enough to embrace this idiom, this wit, that says you can count on one hand the number of friends you'll have in a lifetime. You have acquaintances, co-workers, associates, frat brothers, sisters, but you can count on one hand the number of friends that you'll have in a lifetime. I'm down to four now. Our lives were intertwined at the age of 12 and 13 years old. Showboat and the family had moved from around 8th Avenue North and enrolled in Interurban Hike Junior High School in Fairfield. And we had the same classes, same teachers, 
And somehow or another, our acquaintance created a, an ego conflict. And we got in a fight. There wasn't no weapons, there wasn't no switchblades. It was knuckles. And when I was sitting at his bedside a couple of months ago, he told his wife Rosa that same story. And it seemed to impress her as if he won. I said, Shobo, why you tell that story, man? What? I said, you giving Rosa the impression that you won the fight. Well, I did. I said, you want to finish it? <laughs> that ego conflict will begin to bond over a 60-year span journey of life. In those days, if you saw Showboat, I wasn't far behind. And if you saw me, he wasn't far behind. Just on the light side, Showboat was destined to become an entertainer. And the true meaning for him in the name Showboat was fun. I want to make people happy. I want to them to see me and get, get excited. And his choice of addiction was honey buns and jungle juice. He never took drugs. I don't think he ever drunk any liquor. But no matter where we went, whether we went Johnny Jive going down to Silicago, and back then there were weekend platter parties and and, and we were back up in the woods, and sometimes it'd be muddy, and sometimes we, 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 we missed a turn at the twin oak trees, and sometimes we went go down there double dating and coating, and sometimes we got ran out of those woods too. But what was so funny was that Shobo was the first one, if not in Alabama, to take a dial tone, a rotary phone, and put it in his Dodge Charger and plug the cord into the cigarette lighter. Somebody know what I'm talking about? And, and as soon as, like a peacock, as, he, as soon as he noticed somebody was looking at him, he'd pick up the phone and say, yeah, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And one of his professors saw him doing that one day, and, 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 and he was late going to class. And when the professor said, how did you, you know, how did you get that phone? He said, well, I had to take a call from the president. <laughs> we had great times. We, we walked together. We, we started singing in the choir, and he, he was trying to sing. Then we joined the band, and he had a trumpet, Dr. Wesley. And all the years he tried to play that trumpet, he never got, got rated no more than a beginner. The trumpet was just as flat, but he kept on blowing. But one day, our bandmaster gave him the drum major stick. I said, uh-oh. Showboat revolutionized drum major style. I want you to hear me. All these back flips and high stepping, they came, they, they mimic showboat. Yes, they did. Even, even the steppers now have taken it to a new level because of showboat. This, all of these things are compiled in how God ordained you for a purpose. And by the way, Showboat was saved. I want you to know that. He got us in so much trouble sometime, and we got out of it every time. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I remember one day we were, as high school students, we were up on the second floor of the old Fairfield Industrial High School, Rick, and, and Showboat decided to light the garbage can and put the match in the garbage can and that 
on one side of the stairs, a hallway. He rolled it down the stairs, and I was with him. And we thought that we could outrun Professor Oliver back then. We ran from one end of the stairway to the next, and by the time we came down to the second stairway, Professor Oliver would say, come on in, boys. Got us in trouble, but we were saved. We were saved from the tragedies that could have been worse, from the accidents, from all of those things. And when we decided to formalize, uh, to the, create the Ebenezer, there were five of us, Don Wallace, Chico Percy Caldwell, Johnny Strap, Showboat, and me. We sung all over the place. But if you ever saw the Five Heartbeats movie, that was us. That was us. Eddie Kane was Johnny Strap. Showboat was a choreographer. He wanted us jumping all up and down off the stage. And I said, I ain't doing that, man. Let me just hold my hope. Give me a slow song to sing because I'm not going to be trying to keep up with you. But in the making, that bond, that eternal bond, allowed me to travel and see and become who God wanted me to be around the world. We never lost touch. Sometimes when I was in Europe living, I'd call and we stayed for, we talked for hours, just crazy stuff. And then I got a chance to come home in 218 and that bond that we had I was excited about us coming back together after so many years. And suddenly, sickness took him out. Suddenly, no more platter parties, no more DJing, no more step shows. And our hearts began to bond in appreciating the decades that God gave us as best friends. I'm saying best friends because you don't know your best friend until it has been tested by time. As far as I was apart from him and he from me, we stayed in touch. And I could hear Tommy Madea saying sometime when I came to the house visiting from out of town. She said, Mike, look out for Shobo. Just keep your hand on, keep your heart on. And I thought I could do that in these last few months. But he slipped away. And I realized that the excitement of renewing our best friendness had been transferred into the hands of God. But he left descendants who can become great in their own context of their destiny. Erica, you have greatness in your spirit. Demon, you have greatness in your spirit. Bertrand, you have greatness in your spirit. And Natasha, yes, you do. Have greatness in your spirit. Why? Because you're a child of God and you are young. Nothing shall be impossible if you believe that who you are and whose you are will make all the difference when the gates of hell weigh heavily on blocking you from your destiny. Just remember, if God saves Shobo, he'll save you too.
words can't express the joy in our hearts right now from all the words of encouragement and condolences shared by people all over the world. Over the last week, we've heard stories and shared so many memories. And my brother and my sister and I, we've been using the moniker greatest DJ to ever live. And he was that. He was a businessman. He was an entrepreneur. He was a mentor. He was an educator. He was a proud man of Omega. He was so many things to so many people. But to me, he was my dad. And anybody that knew my dad knew that he was a master storyteller. He had stories for days. And for the last week, I've been thinking about what is my favorite showboat story that I could share with you. And to be honest, I don't have one. Instead, I want to share a lesson from my dad. Hebrews, the 12th chapter of the ninth verse says, besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. When I was a little kid, my dad had a white Corvette, black interior with a black drop top, with a little dog on the back of it, represent Omega Sci-Fi. And he would pick me up, and we would ride in the Corvette. He would have the music blasting, and we would ride through different communities, and that's how he would promote his parties for that night. And I remember very vividly being in that Corvette and it seemed like everywhere we rode through, every stoplight, every stop sign, you hear somebody saying, showboat, boat, showboat, I see you. I'm going to be there tonight. And he could see the look on my face, like this is the greatest thing ever. If you could imagine what it was like to have showboat as your dad, you're right, that's what it was like. And he could see the joy on my face like the amazement. And I remember very vividly we pulled into Turtles Music Store in, in Fairfield. And I said something to the effect of, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be famous just like you. And he always was like naturally so funny. But when he was serious, he would call my whole name. And I remember him rolling up the windows and letting the top up. And before we got out the car, he said, Bertram O'Neill, let me tell you something. He said, when the parties are over and the radio station is gone off the air and nobody's there to pat you on the back, in those moments, that's when I'll be the most proud of you. And my whole life, I, I took that as meaning having strong character, having your name mean something, living with integrity. But over the last week, I've realized that's not what he meant at all. What he meant was in those quiet moments when it's just you and the Lord, do you know that he's there? And so I say today that now that his party is over, now that the radio station has gone off the air and we can no longer pat him on his back, we are proud that Lester Young was our dad, was our husband, was our brother, was our friend. So the lesson in this today is this. Don't worry about what people say, to, say about you when you're gone. Worry about where you're going. Thanks, Dad.
Pray with me now. Father, we thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. We thank you for the gift of life and for the blessing of it. We thank you for the life of Shobot. 
Thank you for the years that you gave him to live on the earth. And for the family and friends that were developed as a result of his time. We pray now for the comfort of the Holy Spirit upon all who are gathered here today. Especially his family. We thank you for your precious word. In your word, you've deposited many promises. Promises to remind us that you are our refuge and strength, a present help in the time of our trouble. Promises that remind us that, Lord, you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. And that you would keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds on you because we trust you. Pray that each one of these promises would be vouchsafed to us today. Our hearts will be encouraged and lifted. Thank you for what you are going to do now. Lift again your servant out of self. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Speak to us and through us in this moment of sharing. And bless the words that are in our mouth and the meditations that are on our heart. That it may be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For we ask it all now in the name of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, whenever we gather on these occasions that we call funerals, we always come for the same reasons. The people are always different. But the purposes for gathering are the same. There are three reasons, or should I put it another way, there are three stories that are told. First is the story of a person who has lived on the earth. For greater than 70 years, God gave us Lester Showboat. Young, you've heard from his brother, you've heard from his friend, you've heard from his son. What can be added to that? Not much. I would simply say that from my personal perspective, we were contemporaries. He was doing his thing at Miles. I was a student at Tennessee State. When I came home, got with the bros, so to speak. That was the showboat. And then later, as we transitioned out of college and moved into the entertainment world, I too was one of those entertainers. Played trumpet in a band, trumpet. <laughs> I mastered mine. <laughs> Played in a band, a Magnaforth band in Shore. So we would, we would sometimes be in, in, in similar places or insane places where entertainment was going down. Showboat would be the DJ sometimes. We would be the band on the stand. There was one expression that he said, man, I know it's inappropriate, but I got to tell you. At the end of his show, Shabon said, I got to get out of here now. <laughs> he said, I got to go to the motel to get some of this hotel. You had those expressions. If you got a hole in your soul, slide on the patch, baby, and let it stick. <laughs> but those were kinds of things that we would laugh about and talk about and, and share. But as Pastor Mike said, that was the season. And that season passed. We all had a season, we all had a season where we stomped the yard, where we did a, crazy, a lot of crazy things, but then there was another part of life that was the professional career that developed, and because he did prepare himself through college experience, he was able to relocate, move to Huntsville, and take on another whole level of work, making a mark at Redstone Arsenal doing noble things that made us all proud and etched his name in the history books continually. And then there was the family development and the personal time and all of those lessons that came as a result of those relationships. 
private times. And then the latter part of the book is where there was personal challenge. Whatever way you have known Lester Sibold Young, God has blessed his human family with this awesome gift called memory. And as long as memory lasts, each one of you in your own unique ways can always recall the life and times of Lester Showboat Young. There was not a classic in Birmingham or a step show in Alabama that wasn't authenticated by Showboat. His memory can always be recalled. His life is the first story. The second story is the story of his family. He has a loving wife, he has children, he has siblings, he has grandchildren who come today after having stood on the sidelines somewhat helpless over the last little while to watch a strong man go through some incredible experiences that rendered them helpless. I don't know if you've ever been in a position like that. I mean, sometimes we look at the end game and we see death coming and we think, wow, maybe it was better if it was sudden, but I don't know. Sometimes sudden death can do us damage because it can surprise our soul, but watching a person go through too can be extremely difficult. Especially not being able to change the circumstance. And you pray, you cry out to God, you, you know that He can, but He doesn't. And so it gives some difficulties to our hearts. But through it all, God blessed you, God allowed you to brace yourself. God allowed you to attend to his needs and to be there for him and with him. And the comfort that you will receive as a result of that can never be taken away from you. The scriptures say, as a matter of fact, the person that gives as much as a cup of cold water in my name will not lose the profits from boy. But you're entitled to some long-term blessings, some comfort beyond the day. So we come today, family members, fraternity, co-workers, and others, to extend to each one of you our deep sympathy and to say to you that we're praying with you and for you that God will heal you in your brokenness. This family story is the second story. The third story is God's story. Man, I've been struggling with this all day. I wrote some down, but that's not where I'm going. Got to go a different way. Got to go where the Lord say. So we'll go to the familiar words of John Gospel, 14th chapter. And this thought just riveted in my mind. John's Gospel, chapter 14. First verse says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I want to talk just a few minutes about a cure for a broken heart. A cure for a broken heart. It's one thing to to know that, that God is, is, is with you when you're on the mountain. And there's an account in 1 Kings about the children of Israel when they were in war against Syria. And the prophet was given the secrets or the locations of where the armies of the Syrians were coming from. And the Syrian army captain being Hadad, 
was upset. He said, I must have a spy in the camp. Somebody told him, no, it's not a spy in the camp. It's a prophet in the camp. And he said, well, maybe the children of Israel just know where I am because they got a God who's on the mountain. But we're going to surprise them. We're going to come in the valley. And we want to know, is that God the God of the valley? The disciples of Jesus knew what it was like to have Jesus when they were in the mountain top experiences. For three years, they had left their families, they had left their friends, they had left it all to follow him. And what did they see? You talking about a show. They saw the greatest show on earth. Oh, man, they, 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 they saw Jesus, man, heal all manner of sickness and disease. They saw him recreate limbs and give people limbs who had never walked. They saw him make eye sockets for people who had never seen. They were waiters one day when he opened a fish market and a bakery on the side of the mountain. You're talking about seeing some things, man. They saw him walk on water. They saw him at church. They saw him turn church out. They saw him in the cemetery, man, raising dead folk. They stopped he stopped one day a funeral procession coming out of the village of Nain. And he touched the casket and gave the widow woman her son back. Man, they saw something. They heard something. They saw that it was not just a show, but it was the demonstration of the glory of God that Jesus single-handedly eliminated sickness and disease in all of Upper Galilee. But now three years has passed, and he has gathered with his disciples in a borrowed upper room. And the elephant in the room is that Jesus is leaving. He's going to die. Oh, and what difficulty that brought, what pain that brought. Can you imagine what it was like? As man said, to have Shobot as your daddy, to have Jesus as your constant companion, to provide every day for your needs, to provide for the comfort, to provide the words, to give you opportunity to show your power and everything that was necessary. Jesus was there. And now in that upper room, man, they came jockeying for position. They were insensitive to what was really going on. They were only concerned about themselves. They were only thinking about which one of us would be the greatest in the kingdom. But when he got in that upper room, according to John's gospel, chapter 13, he turned it out again. He dropped down on his knees and he took a towel and he began to wash feet. And he said, you don't even know what's happening. He said, uh, uh, you, you're talking about who's the greatest. He said, but I've given you an example. Man, do you know who was in that room? That was Peter in that room who was going to deny him. That was Thomas in that room who doubted everything. That was Peter in that room. Man, that was Judas in that room. Judas would have had to take some of that water. They were all there in that upper room. And Jesus began to announce. He had said it before, but they had missed it. He said, why are you going to betray me? He said, but I'm going to be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified. But then the third day, I'll rise again. But they missed the message. They missed the message. But they could sense the sorrow of the master talking about leaving. So after doing all of the things that were necessary to get them ready, he began to give them some incredible promises. And he says to them, let not your heart be troubled. He said, I, I, I know this is going to be difficult to handle. I know my departure is not going to be pleasant. I know that it's going to bring pain. I know that it's going to present challenge and uncomfortableness for you. But don't allow yourself to be troubled. Now, he never said don't cry. He didn't say don't go through what people go through because it's normal. But he says don't be troubled. 
Don't, and the writer Paul later wrote about that. He said, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. He said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then we know that God is going to bring with him. That was a whole different situation. But here, Jesus looks at his men. And he says, I, I, I know your heart is troubled. I know death brings trouble. Separation. See, it's the separation that hurts. I don't think anybody in this room is concerned or overly concerned that Shobo is not going to be with God in heaven. That's a good thing. But what hurt is the separation. It is to be forced to be separated from someone you have known and loved all of your life, especially children. For, for spouse and others, siblings and all, who always had the joy, always had the jokes, always had the enjoyment, always had the assurance. It was always there. And now how in the world are we possibly going to be able to deal with this with him not being here? Jesus speaks of the transition. He says, now listen, he said, I want your heart to be troubled. He said, I want you to believe in God. In other words, I'm going to hand you over. I'm, I'm going to hand you over to, to God. And, and just as you believed in me, I want you to believe also in him. I'll just be out of sight. You won't be able to see me, but you've not seen God either. But you have believed that he exists. And just as you have believed in his existence, I want you to believe that I'll continue to be with you. It'll just change forms. Instead of you being able to see me and talk to me, you'll hear me. You'll feel me. You'll understand that I'm always with you, but just in a different vernacular. Jesus goes on to say to these disciples, he said, listen, he said, listen, in my father's house, he started talking about going somewhere. He said, listen, he said, I'm, I'm going to my father's house. I'm going ahead of you. That's what good dads do, isn't it? I'm going ahead of you to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And I'll be back. I'll come back and get you. That where I am, you can be also. One of the boys, man, playing crazy, he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said, you're not going to need a GPS. He said, don't worry, I got it. He said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Incredible promises, incredible stuff. You don't have to worry about how you're going to find him again. What you need to do is make the same choices that he made. He chose Jesus as his Lord and Savior during his life. If you make that choice and doing your life, you can be sure you'll find a way. No matter where you come from, no matter how long you've been doing it, no matter where you've been, Jesus says, I am the way, meaning I am the only way. You can find a way. He goes on to make some more promises here. He, Philip said, Lord, how can we know the way? Show us the Father. It'll suffice us. Jesus said, if you really had known me, you really would have known that my father and I are one. That's the lesson that Bertram talked about. If you really had known who I am, you would know it was more than just the step. You would know that it was more than the song. You would know that there was a force inside of me that drove me, that kept me, that comforted me, that blessed me. And that same source, I'm handing you off to. Because that will be the source that will provide the comfort and strength that you need when I'm gone. Man, incredible stuff in my father's house. Man, what is that? People call it a lot of different things. Some people call it heaven, and they call it heaven because it's out of sight. Some people call it a kingdom because it's ruled by a king and we're servants. Some people call it a place where the wicked will cease from troubling, the weary will be at rest. Whatever you assign to it, it's the place, the abode of God. It's where we all must go. Where we all ought to want to go. 
Now, I don't know about you, man. You know, on earth, I didn't think about ever being having a prison ministry because I don't smoke and I don't look good in stripes. <laughs> and so when I think about my eternal destiny, I can't help but to think about a place where I would want to be, where everything will be all right. I want you to understand, Shomo understood some stuff. He understood that this world was not his home, that he could not stay always. He wanted to stay, and if he had stayed, it would have been more for you. But if he left, it would have been for his personal gain. And that's what Jesus said. It's really expedient for you. It's better for you. He goes on to say that in the 16th chapter, that I go away. Because if I go not away, then I'm going to have to be in the same location all of the time for each one of you to see me personally. But if I go away, then spirit would be there. And each one of you could have access at any time. Man, I, 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 I know it's hard today. I know it's hard for bros. I know it's hard for family. I know it's hard for friends. I know it's hard for coworkers. There's never a convenient time for someone to die. Always seem to be too soon. But God has a greater plan. We look at the design from the wrong end. We see the thread taken from us, and we think it's all messed up. But what we don't see is the thread being woven into the master plan on the other side. As all a part of God's divine design. Believe in God. Believe in, in the place. Believe in heaven. Heaven is real to me today. There once was a time when heaven was a distant place. But when my father went to heaven, heaven became a real place to me. Heaven became a real place to me when my mother went to heaven. When my brother went to heaven, heaven became a real place. In my father's house, he talks about a many dwelling place, many mansions. He said, if it wasn't the truth, I wouldn't have even told you about it. He said, but I got to get out of here now. I got to go ahead of you. Jewish men, when they left, they didn't go and move into another community. They lived with the father. And they just built rooms, mansions onto the father's house. So that when they received their bride, their family, they brought them all to the one place. And they all live right there forever. And that's why you see generations of people in other communities except this one that live together three and four generations deep because they understood what was really up. And Jesus understood what was up. You know, David, I'm closing now. The earlier psalm said, listen, even when I walk through the valley where the road is not marked and the shadows gather and no traveler comes back to tell us where they've gone. He said, even there I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. He knew that God was with him. And where was David even talking about? Where did David depict? The same place. The arrival was to be at the father's house. Not in the valley. The valley was just a passageway to get one to the father's house. Look at what happened in Psalm 23. And I'm going to finish it at 14 where it was. There at the father's house. Listen to what David described. The banquet is spread. The table is spread. The cup is filled again and again with good things. The twin angels are revealed and the victor cries out, surely goodness, these two guys, and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. I shall dwell where? Not in the valley, but where? In the house of the Lord. Can I help you understand that showboat is shouting? Do you know why he's shouting? Because now he got concert tickets to go down and hear the four and twenty elders sing. He got wings now. He can fly around glory. He can go to the crystal fountain and he can drink from the waters of life. He got everything that he needs now 
He don't have to worry. He don't have to worry about how he's going to walk when he can fly. He don't have to worry about what is going to be. Everything is going to be all right because now he's in the Father's house. And he doesn't want you to worry because before he left, he turned you over to the Father. And just as he took care of you when he was on the earth, God will take care of you. God will wipe tears from your eyes. God will heal your broken heart. God will pick you up. God will be with you. And he promises that he will never leave you, nor would he ever forsake you. And if that won't cure your broken heart, nothing else will. But if you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you need to do that now. While the time of your departure may not be known, the place of your destination doesn't have to be something you have to guess about. Fix your business. Pray right where you sit. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to be the man, the woman that you want me to be. Tell me the truth. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he really did come to the earth. He really did die on the cross. He really was raised the third day. And I really want him to live in my heart. Friend, I want you to know if you prayed like that, your life changed. But you got to go further. Find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Somewhere that you could be under the regular hearing of the gospel. The book says faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. If you make that choice, your heart not only will be cured now, but your life will be secured for all of eternity. Let not your heart be troubled. Come on, put your hands together. It's Deborah Bates. And thereafter, we're going to ask, after she's finished, we're going to ask the professional staff of Faith Memorial to come and we'll do committals and all of those things here. Ms. Bates. One of these mornings, it won't be very long. You're gonna look for me, and I'll be gone. Oh, no. I'm going to a place. Where there's nothing, nothing to do all day but walk around, walk around heaven all day. <coughs> when I get to heaven, I'm gonna jump and shout. be waiting my father my sisters and my brothers too we're gonna join hands and walk around heaven all day
Every day is gonna be Sunday. Uh -huh. The Sabbath will have no end. We'll do nothing, nothing but sing and praise His holy name. And when He says, Well done. gonna be Sunday. I thank you, Lord. The Sabbath will have no end. We'll do nothing, nothing but sing and praise his holy, holy name. And when he says, well done, Gonna walk around heaven. Oh, oh, all day, all day. We ask now that the professional staff from Faith Memorial will come. Scripture reminds us that man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up as it were a flower and fleeth as it were a shadow and never continues in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for comfort but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ear to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour to fall from any pains of death from thee. For as much it is pleased the almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, who therefore commit his body earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that whose second coming in glorious majesty judge the world. The earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body. According to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things under himself. The scriptures, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. And so said the Spirit, yea, for they rest from their labors. Father, we thank you today again for the life of Lester. Thank you for the time that you blessed him. Thank you for the entertainment that he brought, the laughter, the joy. Thank you for the professionalism. Thank you for the valuable contributions. Thank you for the family. Thank you for the love exchanged and showed and demonstrated. 
pray now for their peace and comfort as we prepare to go up from here. Pray that you would walk with them, walk beside them, lift them when they're falling down, strengthen them continually. May they continue to reflect over this wonderful life and learn the great lessons that you would have them know. Oh God, we pray for those who have traveled great distances to be here and for those who have come from nearby. We pray that when this day is done and we return to our places of rest, we'll find things at least as well as it was when we came forth. Dismiss us now from here and never from your holy presence. As we ask now that the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that he will rest, rule, and abide with each one of us, your children, until we meet again, God's people said, Amen. I want to invite you to stand now as we prepare to process out. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Thou art with me. A rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come in this way.